Welcome to the third video of the CSGO sticker tutorial. In the last video we created the VMT file of the glossy sticker and took a look at how the SDK tool works. In this video we will create the holographic sticker version for the angry chicken. For the glossy sticker we created one VTF file that contained the image of the sticker. In the holo sticker we will need three VTF files. The first one is for the image, just like the glossy sticker. The second will contain the holographic information of the image which will decide how the effect is applied on the sticker. And the third VTF is for the color spectrum. But this file is not a must because the game will provide a default spectrum if no custom one was made. Let's create a new folder for the holo sticker. And let's start by copying the GIMP file of the glossy sticker into the folder. I'll rename the file to angry chicken holo base and then open it. The only thing I will change in this file is the alpha channel, because for the glossy version, the Wornout sticker looks like this. I want the holo effect to be applied to the body of the chicken, and therefore I don't want the body to disappear and have the holo effect removed when the sticker wears out. So I'll remove the layer mask and hide the visible layer, and show all the layers that make the body of the chicken. I will right click on the ninth layer and choose new from visible, and hide all the other layers again. The new visible layer will make it easier for me to select all the parts I want for the mask. So in order to avoid confusion with the other visible layer, I'll call this one form mask. With the form mask layer chosen, choose the fuzzy select tool from the toolbar and click on the empty area. Then click Ctrl I to invert the selection. Now the chicken's body is selected. We can hide this layer now and show the visible layer. Right click on it and choose add layer mask and in the pop-up choose white. Choose the color fill tool and choose some dark gray color above 30. Make sure that the mask of the layer is chosen and use the fill tool anywhere on the selection. Save and export the file as TGA and then create the VTF file. Now we're done with the base texture and can move on to the holo mask. The best way to start working on the mask is to duplicate the base texture and start modifying it according to our needs. I'll name the new file Angry Chicken Holo Mask. If you look at the official documentation of Valve, you'll find a process that talks about modifying the RGB channels separately. According to the documentation, the red channel is responsible for deciding which areas of the image will have the holo effect. Black areas will not have any holo effect, and gray and white areas will be holographic. The brighter the gray, the stronger the effect will be. In the green channel, you add any pattern that you want the effect to follow. And in the blue channel, you control how the color appears in certain areas. Having said all that, I will not follow the exact steps of the documentation. I will do all the steps that the documentation mentioned in one layer and across all channels. Open the holo mask file and remove the visible and mask layers. I will start assigning black to white values across the layers. I only want the body, head and hand of the chicken to have the holo effect. So I will color all the other areas with black. I will use the color curves tool on each layer separately. I'll keep the body as it is for now. As for the head, I will give it a white to gray gradient. This will make the colors uneven and will make it look more interesting. I'll select the head layer and will use the color select tool to select the white area and delete it. Now I will choose the gradient tool with the current colors. Make sure that the gradient is set to work from foreground to background color and is set to be a linear gradient. And now I can drag the tool over the body and modify it as I wish. Finally, I want to use a pattern on the body. For simplicity, I will use a different pattern than the one that I used for my published sticker. 
I have created the diamond shaped pattern in the past, which I will import to this session by going to File, Open as Layers. I'll move the new layer directly above the body layer. Let's move it around and resize it until it covers the body of the chicken. And now I will cut out all the extra parts of the pattern by choosing the body layer and selecting the empty areas inside it. Then I'll go back to the pattern layer and press delete. The pattern now hides some of the body parts, so I'll change the blend mode of the pattern layer to multiply instead of normal. This will enable the darker values of each layer to appear. Also, currently the pattern is too dark. This will make the hollow effect less visible. So let's make it lighter using the Color Curves tool. And with this we're done with the hollow mask file. Let's export the TJ file and use it to create the VTF file. It's time for us to create the VMT file. As we did with the glossy sticker, we will copy the content of the VMT file from the documentation, but this time from the hollow sticker section. Paste the contents into the file. As you can see, I have already modified the base texture and hollow mask values to contain the appropriate paths of the VTF files. One more value that we'll change in the file later is the value for the hollow spectrum. The current value is the default spectrum provided by the game in case you haven't created any custom color spectrum. Let's see what we've achieved so far by loading the VMT file into the SDK tool. And this is the effect achieved by what we've done. As we did in the previous video, we can check the wear progress of the sticker, and if we don't like how it looks when it's worn out, then we can go to the unwear strength value and raise it. If you have specific colors that you would like to use for the hollow effect, then you should create a custom color spectrum. I have saved the image of the default spectrum from the official documentation and opened it in GIMP. Let's hide the layer and create a new one. In order for us to color the spectrum, we will need to create our own gradient using the colors we want. So let's do that. Go to the top right side of GIMP and choose the Palettes tab. If you don't have that tab available, then click on the tiny arrow at the right, go to Add Tabs, and choose Palettes. Click on New Palette and give it a name. Now we're in the Palette Editor. This is where we add the colors and we do so by choosing the colors from the foreground color and adding them as entries in the palette. When you're done adding colors, go back to the Palettes tab and right-click on your new palette, and choose Palette to Gradient. Now if you go to the Gradients tab, you'll see a new gradient with the name you chose for your palette. You'll also see that the Gradient tool has been set to use the new gradient you created. Make sure that the gradient's shape is linear and start dragging in the canvas. You can modify the range of the colors if you want. And as we did with the base texture and the mask, export the TGA and VTF files and modify the VMT file with the absolute path of the hollow spectrum. Now when we inspect the sticker in the SDK tool again, we see that the colors change to match those we specified in the custom color spectrum. And we're done with the hollow sticker. 
In the next video, we'll be talking about how to create foil stickers.